Good evening and welcome to Smart Entrepreneurship Decoded on Transcontinental Times. I have always spoken about the various paths that are there to achieve entrepreneurial success away from the myths, the common folklore and kind of crap you hear from people after they make it. I wrote about midlife entrepreneurship in my book, Reboot to Reconquer, Navigating the Afternoon of Life. And I advised midlifers stag with stagnant careers to not try their hand at entrepreneurship without acquiring the skills that stagnated their careers. So I was saying that even as I knew that 55% of the successful startups in the world are set up by people above the age of 35. It's not necessarily a young man's game. Our guest tonight is a story that I thought needs to be told. We celebrate unicorn founders. We celebrate all kinds of entrepreneurs, but we try to run through a particular narrative. Either there is a deep sob story behind it, or the person comes from IIT, IIM, etc. But our guest tonight, the only I he went to and did was instrumentation engineering. Not exactly the sexiest thing, right? But this brings me to my story. I know him from the past few decades. There are similarities to our stories. Both of us achieved a certain degree of success in our professional careers working in the US. Both of us came back. Both of us set up companies around the same time, 2007 to 2009, living in the same apartment block, setting, it, setting up our companies within a kilometer of each other. I set up a company in a completely a different area to my area of expertise with great bravado, great bombastic talk, lot of management jargon, bold, going where nobody has gone before, ready to change the world. And within three years, I was full of debt, despair, and utter destruction for my family for the next decade. On the other hand, our guest tonight set up a company in a calm, collected manner, in an area of his expertise, taking his wife along with him, something that I don't advise people to do in entrepreneurship. I say, keep your family out. But he took his wife along with him. And this, over a period of seven to eight years, they set up a highly successful company, completely self-funded, and sold it to a large Indian conglomerate. There is no sob story in this. There is no IIT, IAM funding in this. There is no VC valuation in this. But these are the kinds of role models of entrepreneurship that we as Indians should celebrate. With that, let's welcome our guest tonight, Ravi Joshi, Chairman of the Board and Chief Mentor of Undock. Welcome, Ravi. Nalan, thank you for having me on your show. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So Ravi, we often hear about people who say, I learned from my mistakes. And I believe that failure only teaches you how to fail, doesn't teach you how to succeed. You have seen success as you sold your company. I'm sure there were a lot of moments which we'll talk about later. So tell us, what is it that made you succeed? What were the things that made you succeed? So good question, you know, off the bat. Uh... Incidentally, when I started uh, Keystone, I was 40 years old. You know, when you get to be 40, you essentially have run a fair degree of uh, miles. And uh, while there is always, uh, like you said, you know, people celebrate early founders. You know, I'm 24 in my garage, my basement, I'm doing this. But for me, uh, what happened was, you know, I was having a fairly cushy career in a blue chip company. And uh, I came to the end of the road on how far I could grow there. And uh, I either I had to move across the ocean or look at what else I can do. And uh, that got me thinking. So fundamentally, I have a set of uh, characteristics, uh, Nalini, you know, I, I have fairly high initiative. Uh, typically, if you were to say, hey, who will do this? You know, I'm the first one to raise my hand. Uh, I'm a little stubborn. Uh, I tend to persist with my ideas. And uh, for good or for bad, uh, now they say it's good to have very short attention span. You know, most entrepreneurs have very short attention span. 
that's how I was. I could quickly grasp what was going on and make uh, did, uh, no deductions and you know, make decisions. And uh, I was always that way, you know. And I had a certain uh, intent to control. You know, I wanted to have a say in my destiny. Uh, you know, I was fortunate to work with a set of managers. You know, my managers who let me do my own thing. Uh, as long as I delivered, you know, they let me do my own thing. So. Uh, you know, some of these are the core ingredients. I know you're 40, you've achieved success in, uh, in the corporate world. Uh, you have a fairly, you know, healthy bank balance. And uh, so in my situation, you know, I took it, I took my base ingredients and uh, I said, no, let's go do something. You know, uh, there is a lot of opportunities. And the other big thing, uh, Nalin, you know, the key thing is, you know, when you get to my age and you have built industry contacts, right, you've gone through large projects, you know, you made connections. So I was very lucky to inherit a very vibrant network from my previous job. And uh, since most of my goals were to pursue my core expertise and really operate in the same business world, you know, that I was part of as an employee of a company, uh, I was in a very well-known sandbox, right? Uh, it's just that I was going to undertake a different persona. Of course, you know, much later, I realized that running a, a PNL and you know having a responsibility of payroll of uh, say 300 people is something uh, no company will teach. But there were a lot of other core ingredients that I had accrued in my experience, and uh, I genuinely felt I was I was you know uh, quite well set up to uh, go at this. So I sold my 401k, uh, you know, raised some money, and uh, you know bootstrapped the company and uh, you know started to really uh, you know uh, build the business. So the key things I picked up from there that you stepped out with a good network, you stepped yeah. up with a certain degree of clarity of thought, and yeah. you stepped out with a very strong belief in whatever we were doing. Yeah. Now, yeah. The journey wouldn't have been easy, right? I'm sure there were dark moments. I'm sure there were difficult moments, etc. Is it easier to tide over with your with a life partner as a co-founder, or is it tougher? So. Uh... See, one more aspect of mine uh, that can be watched is, you know, uh, I've always uh, surrounded myself with uh, family, uh, even in my other jobs. Uh, in my previous job, there were six people from my family. Uh, you know, I have this ability to compartmentalize. You know, I could care less uh, what someone is outside the office. Uh, when we come into an office, and this is a lesson I learned, uh, you know, at great sacrifice, by the way. Uh, when you hire somebody, the first thing you have to do is there has to be very clear role and responsibilities that you set out, right? What is this person accountable for? Enable them and get out of the way. So I did not really pay much credence to the, uh, the relationship outside the office, but I benefited from this, uh, this massive level of comfort and trust you have uh, in just handing over the keys to somebody else, right? So that, uh, in hindsight, worked very well. But... As a person, uh, when we are in a in a professional environment, I absolutely don't give any credence to personal relationships. So, talk to me about you know when people uh, become successful or if they fail, they often blame luck, fluke, chance. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about what weightage would you give uh, hard work, smart work, skill, and luck, fluke, chance? What worked for you? So, I mean, if you look at uh, luck, fluke, and chance, uh, logically, you have to tie it back to timing, right? Whatever you want to do, right? Uh, the marketplace at some point accepts your idea, your product, your service, and in other at other times, it rejects it. So, I would put down luck and fluke and chance to timing, right? So, okay. when you start a company, you have to be very, very aware of, is this the right timing? Uh, sometimes... Uh, you get into a business, the timing is right, and then some macro event pushes you down, that you can't help, right? That's okay. But, you know, that's timing. And uh, uh, that's how it is. And after that, you know, once you get going, it's really effort, uh, Nalin. It's absolutely effort. And uh, there will be difficult days. Uh, to give you an example, you know, uh, for most of my career, I was actually a software engineer. I was you know, writing code, and I was hiring technical teams and, and building products. Um, no one taught me that I have to sit and research and, uh, you know, build a, you know, the top of the sales funnel and make cold calls. I was just not built for that. It was utterly uncomfortable. So one thing is 
if you want to go do something on your own, you have to be able to handle difficult days, right? Uh, and, you know, things will come your way that you'll never ex expect to get your way. You know, there is a very uh, beautiful saying by Mike Tyson, by the way. You know, uh, you can make all the wonderful plans till you get punched in the face, right? And in every startup journey, you'll get punched in the face. And uh, in, in my career uh, at Keystone as a founder and CEO, there were multiple situations where, you know, we were uh, thrown a curveball. Uh, that we didn't know how to handle, but we had to very, very quickly, uh, you know, learn how to handle and effort was the mainstay. We just had to work very, very hard and uh, the entire team rallied uh, and, you know, we, we came out of the woods more than once. So you, in an important nugget there, it is about timing and Bill Gross also from his study of startups, success and failure said yeah. that the most important criteria is timing. You can call it yeah. luck fluke chance. But yeah. you got it right. It's timing. Yeah. Yeah. You also quoted Mike Tyson there. Yeah. Where he said, uh, you know, everybody has a plan till they get punched in the face. Yeah. But more appropriately for me, he said, old too soon, wise too late. When he was in jail uh, Fair. for Fair. whatever he had done at that time. So yeah. Yeah. I remember Mike Tyson saying as well, but in a different yeah. Uh, context. Yeah. Let's take a leap of faith a little bit. Let's move a little ahead. Yeah. Now that you have seen success, I'm sure uh, you have way more to go. You're still young. Yeah. Yeah. When you and you started something again. Do you think differently financially when you have resources versus what you thought earlier? I'll, I'll specify my question a little bit more. When there is adversity and when there is limited capital, which is what most people face in the beginning. They have certain clarity of thought. They know they have to do this. Otherwise, there is nothing beyond this. But now you have options. Does it make it tougher or does it make it easier? Uh, you know, great question. And I, I struggle with it, by the way. Uh, it makes it tougher uh, because you start to take liberties, right? You start to take liberties and you have uh, in the back of your mind this belief that, okay, you know, if it's a question of another 100K, I know where to go get it from. And that's why uh, to be a serial entrepreneur, uh, you have to be extremely disciplined. So as much as, uh, you know, I can go fund my current venture, we have uh, this time around, uh, Nalin, we're building products and uh, we have every intent to go raise money. Uh, it's critical, right? It's, it's not about uh, there is a source of funding. It's about uh, whether this thing you're creating, does it stand the test of scrutiny and validation that only an external, unvested, dispassionate, and sometimes brutally honest person can bring to the table. And that's what, say, your VCs and angels are. So to me, uh, in a nutshell, it's it's a little harder because you, you think you have a war chest, uh, but that's something I'm fighting very, very hard uh, to change. And uh, to be frank, I've had a couple of very... Uh, uncomfortable, uh, you know, discussions over the past two weeks with the with the core team, and that's just the way it is, right? You, this is uh, you're in a startup, uh, you're there to create a commercial success, right? Uh, philanthropy is different. You're here to build a commercial success, and the rigor that uh, somebody demonstrates with the uh, you know with uh, friends and family seed round has to be there, whether it's you know your own money. You must absolutely be very disciplined. So, Ravi, you mentioned mentioned serial entrepreneur. And I want to pick your brain a little bit about that. Yeah. Now, you started out, had professional success, started yeah. this company. I'm sure there were dark moments. There were difficult times. You were self-funded, bootstrapped. You had put you and your wife both in the same pot. There was no fallback option. Yeah. And then you saw relative success when you sold the company. I say relative because I expect much more will come your way. Sure. Then why again? What is this Kira? I mean, are you not happy being having a calm and uh, uh, cool life or what is it that picks you to start again? So, so I think uh, most of us are restless, uh, you know, and uh, and the restless energy has to be channeled right. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm, I'm quite restless by nature. You know, uh, I have to keep doing things. And uh, no, I, I did uh, to be. Uh, you know, fair to uh, the environment, you know, I've been given, I did take some time off, you know, I've had a relatively uh, quiet time, you know, I've picked up other vocations, you know, I've spent time traveling and meeting family. 
so there was a lot of personal debt I had accrued, Nalin, uh, uh, in terms of the time I spent with my family, my son. You know, for the most part, you know, uh, you know, I had not, I have not seen most of my son's growing years, right? All the son on the road. Uh, so you know, I've had chance to uh, kind of repay some of those debts, and uh, and the restless mind uh, took over again. And uh, and you have to exercise whatever faculties you have. You have to exercise them. And uh, you know, uh, for a while. I was thinking, you know, why don't I go get into, you know, philanthropy uh, full time? And uh, I was, you know, really caught up in that idea. I was struggling, you know, what should I do? And uh, my father told a very sage thing. You know, he said, yes, you can do philanthropy for the next 30 years. But for the next 10 years, uh, if you actually put your faculties to use, you could raise a significantly large corpus for what you can do for the next 20 years. Right. You can hire someone to do your job in philanthropy, which you can and go use your faculties to go build another enterprise and, you know, see another exit. And then, you know, if you are so kind hearted, use the next uh, exit and the funds for the exit uh, to do a larger scale philanthropy. So that kind of, you know, made sense. So right now, you know, uh, I'm very happy to, you know, be back in a situation where I'm able to think. Uh, and fundamentally, we all let us solve problems, Nalan, you know, so you have to be. That's very really sound advice. And I can see where he was going with that. Yeah. So in your next startup, have you also taken your wife along or she decided enough was enough with you? No, I think we said, you know, enough is enough. Uh, but the here's the, the good part, you know, uh, when you go through any experience, right, two people can take away very different things from the experience, positive learnings. So, you know, so in, uh, in my wife's case, in Deepa's case, she's taken a set of learnings. And uh, she's always been a good teacher. She's been a good mentor, you know, and she's logically very sound. So she's at a point where she is uh, starting to network, uh, meet a lot of the, you know, the, the startup community in Bangalore. And uh, she's focused on how she can be an angel investor and be a coach and mentor. And I think that suits her very well. I like to be in the middle of things. Like I said earlier, I do like a degree of control. Nalin, I can't get away from it. Yeah. No, I'm sure you're not going to say anything bad about your wife sitting at home tonight. <laughs> you need to sleep in the same house. Yeah. So let's let's move on a little bit. You, you mentioned yeah. about uh, mentoring startups and meeting a lot more of them. And one of the things when you uh, get success is a lot of people start approaching you for investment. Yeah. Now, again, it's easy to tell somebody what is wrong in something, right? And if we can tell you what is wrong, but it's yeah. difficult to tell what, what is right. Yeah. Yeah, which is what to do versus what not to do. And I find too much of the discourse about what not to do. Correct. So let's talk about when you meet these young entrepreneurs of today or not so young also, what are the few things that you see and you think, wow, I wish I had this trait or this quality that this young generation has got. Do you see anything like that? A fundamental difference between them and when, say, you and I started 15 years ago? Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you look at uh, the way, you know, society's rules are structured, right? Uh, you're essentially hopping from a bus to bus. You go to school, high school, college, and then a job, you know, then family. So there was this entire structure created, assuming you had a fruitful life of about 55 years, and then what, right? Uh, so that structure doesn't hold good anymore, Nalan. Right. Where the world is, I mean, a uh, going back to life expectancy that's going up. Right. Which is a great thing. And also where we are, people are leading longer and more vibrant lives today. And where uh, biotechnology is going in 10 years, uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be enough innovation where uh, people can start to live very fruitfully till 100, 100, 120. So to some extent, the younger generation has seen a lot of this progress. In fact, when I talk to people, I tell them, you know what? We were told we'll retire at 58. No, you should tell yourself we'll retire at 100, right? So the younger generation actually has this benefit of having seen a lot of pro progress in, uh, you know, in uh, people's longevity, in technology, in healthcare. So they need not be uh, adverse to, you know, taking any kind of risk because you have enough and abundant time to reset. Let's say you're on a startup for five years. If it doesn't work, doesn't matter, right? There's a lot more time where you came from. So this concept of I only have so much time in which I have to do this, accrue savings and retire 
that is gone away and to a large extent this generation realizes that they have a much longer lease on productive time than what we had and that's a great asset to have because end of the day given time and effort uh, you will get opportunities you know you may not get the timing right the first time but second time hey it might very well work for you so youngsters today understand that there's a much bigger risk appetite you know going back to maslow's law right uh, we are well beyond that you know roti kabda or makan people are in a much more settled environment and to me that's also a testament of what's gone right in the macro environment right today a lot more companies can actually a uh, lot, lot more startup uh, founders can take risks that they would not take probably 20 years ago so the environment is right people have the confidence so there is net net there is massive positives in the ecosystem today so that's an interesting point you bring because a lot of people don't think of uh, longevity as a key driver towards behavior of startup entrepreneurs and uh, as a kind of advantage but do you also feel that uh, today's entrepreneurs uh, live under so many choices so many options that uh, in a sense they need the hand of a mentor much more they do they do need a uh, hand of a mentor so what's happening is just the just the range of possibilities right now is so massive right Uh, let's take uh, decentralized finance for example right so defi is uh, you know emerging and you have this whole concept of distributed autonomous organization right now let's say there is a, there is a founder who is very enamored by these two concepts right then okay let me go set a defi uh, startup and you know float that out as a dao so but now can you really handle it the systems are not mature enough there is not enough uh, experience under the belt you not seen enough success stories or failures to pick out what is the best practices of any environment so today i think one of the burden that today's uh, uh, founders will have is just a lot of choices in terms of technology uh, in terms of money there is a lot of vc money available uh, so that's why you know i do believe that uh, you should be very very logical when you set out to start a company right uh, you have to look at a variety of things before you jump head in and that's where one of the things i recommend nalin is you know uh, if you're a if you're a founder uh, look to set up a board very quickly right uh, don't wait for some event don't let me get to series a or series b to form a board set up a board very quickly you know get some experience uh, you know in the room uh, where you can learn from them if, if nothing else it's a good point i would only add that you should also listen to the board Uh, from course. my own experience i set up a world class board but i was so stubborn i wouldn't listen to anybody so you should also right. listen to the board the, you right. mentioned uh, product company right your undock is a product company yeah. now india is not known for product companies uh, most yeah. of our large it firms are service oriented software oriented even you can't find a software product off the shelf from any of them right right so what made this shift from in you to move, go for a product company so great question and uh, by the way i had the same uh, the same probably question uh, in in 2009 uh, and uh, and a wise old man you know set me straight uh, so a there is nothing wrong in setting any kind of a company it could be a great product or or a wonderful service uh, innovative service you know everything is uh, fine and you know what we did at keystone is a testament a testament to the fact that you can set up a services company and still you know get good valuations right uh, but however uh, what we are doing now is a result of uh, you know over two and a half decades of experience and we have seen uh, you know recurring problems that large companies face and what's happening is supply chain itself is shifting uh, you know dramatically right uh, the degree of automation that was uh, that was there uh, 10 years ago versus now is very different uh, the labor force that's in the uh, that's available is very different right so companies and companies executives are starting to grapple with uh, different problems from capital from labor uh, so all of these are very large issues that are here to stay for the next 8 to 10 years and uh, we believe there is a set of solutions we have on the drawing board that actually will address these problems we are squarely so, attacking uh, supply chain and this whole e-commerce fulfillment uh, area uh, which is going to grow double digits uh, for a long time so you know uh, product companies typically take a longer life cycle to commercialize uh, break even and all of that stuff what is your advice to product companies about at what stage should they look for capital 
so external capital. external capital yes so i think you know don't bet the farm too early or don't wait for too long i think the the biggest benefit to going and getting some external funding early is validation analyst uh end of the day most founders are so you know uh, enthused about their idea you know they believe this is it you know this is the silver bullet you know and you run very hard uh, but when you go and raise capital uh, i mean like i said don't don't give out the farm you know uh, you know pledge some degree of your uh, equity there's somebody new on the cap table uh, but raise some money where an external validation is done uh, where you pass that scrutiny right and once you do that uh that's the primary benefit in my opinion uh otherwise you can just do friends and family only but i think go and have some professional funding because when it's viewed through the lens of somebody who sees 10 pitch decks every day uh you learn something right you learn something and they, they'll bring you down to the earth very quickly you know so do that and uh, so that's just uh, what it is uh, and of course after that you know ev- you know effort has to be put in you scale and when you go for the later rounds you know be careful about how you dilute right uh, be careful about how you set up your safe instruments right sometimes people uh, set up safe instruments and the valuation keeps changing and over a period of time they've raised enough capital and suddenly they see that you know their cap table looks very different and they they are holding no more than 10 15% of the equity so raise some early early money but after that you know be a lot more judicious in how you how you you know yeah. uh, bring new money that's good saying advice we're running out of time so i'm going to come to my last question now a vc or a pe fund or large alternate ind- investment funds typically are investing other people's money so you have a professional true, manager true, managing true, true, true. i get that yeah. now when it comes to people who have made money in their own lifetime and you didn't make it at the age of 21 through some cool software product right this is sheer hard work applying yeah. your skill applying your experience using your network it is the, i would say it is a traditional hard assed way and you yeah. took it to success yeah so when a person like you is approached for investment and you look at entrepreneurs do you look for people like yourself do you look for maverick ideas do you look for opportunities of the future what is it that excites a person like you so you know uh, i am new to this uh, nalin i have to you know uh, profess to that fact uh, we have made some investments uh, so far the investments i have made have been primarily looking at the founding team you know obviously you understand and you vet landscape you know is it the right business uh, for example i understand supply chain i understand e-commerce i understand retail uh, i understand to some degree you know uh, saas marketplace right so that is there but the investments i have made so far have been primarily looking at the founders you know uh and when i look at founders i you know of course you have to be a smart person but i also look for does this person have grit right so grit is the intersection of you know passion and perseverance does he or she have the grit and uh, i look for humility you know uh i i feel smart people who are humble always make good founders good colleagues you know good people to be in your orbit i look for people who are humble who are smart who have the grit and uh, and also they should be very very vested in what they're doing right and to some extent if the founder is bringing some of his or her own money that's a plus right uh, that makes me feel a little better that okay they are they are like just like i sold my 401k uh, so is somebody willing to bet you know uh, their own uh, personal funds of course if they can't they can't but otherwise you know great their emotional intelligence and how humble they are and also do they have the deep competency you know are they technically good do they are the domain savvy uh, those are the few things i look for It's very well said. You know, earlier you mentioned about you being a little stubborn about your idea, your vision, and how to do it. But the, at the same time, while you're persevering through that, yeah, you need to remain humble. You remain yeah. to pass through difficult times with great grit and determination. You are an embodiment of that, Ravi. Thank you very much. It has been an absolute delight hosting you. Your insights, your real world practical steps, uh, are something that we should f- follow. rather than some of the glorified bombastic talk we hear uh, in the echo chamber of the startup world thank you very much ravi for joining me tonight wish you all the best for undocked have a great night thank you nalin good night bye bye